In this video, we'll be talking about the Pythagorean triples. Now, I can't tell you how many students I've spoken to who think that the Pythagorean theorem is the easiest thing, but when they got to the Pythagorean triples, they thought that life got so much harder, when in fact it's the other way around. The Pythagorean triples have actually been identified to make your life a little bit easier. So I'll show you how. So for example, if I have a right triangle here, and I have whole number side. So this is one example of a Pythagorean triple. All right. So again, if it's a right triangle, super, super important there. And also we have integer sides. Then we have here a Pythagorean triple. It has to have those two conditions. Now you don't come, you don't have to come up with the Pythagorean triplets. They're already predetermined for you as long as if you do the Pythagorean theorem, so 3 squared plus 4 squared, notice that is in fact equal to 5 squared. So since that's true, it is a right triangle, and therefore, since the whole numbers are there, it is a Pythagorean triple. Now, you just have to be able to remember what the triples are and be able to identify them when they show up. So we'll talk about what the most common triples are in just a moment. Okay, so let's take a look at what these most common Pythagorean triples are. We just spoke about one, and I'm going to write it down here. The 3, 4, 5 is very common. That means we have two legs that are 3 and 4, and our hypotenuse, I'll underline the hypotenuse in red, that is 5. All right, but there is more, so let's look at the others. All right, and I'm making a table for a reason, and I'll make that reason clear in a minute. All right, the other, I would say, second most common Pythagorean triple is the 5, 12, 13. And of course, the longest side is the hypotenuse. And so I'll underline that just so you remember that that's the hypotenuse of the 5, 12, 13. All right, again, these are, these are predetermined, and you're just going to have to remember that they're, they exist. Very, very helpful tool on the SAT to remember, especially these two Pythagorean triples. Now, the other two that come up often, um, and more so on the ACT than the SAT, are the 8, 15, 17, and of course our hypotenuse is 17, and the 7, 24, 25. 7, 24, 25. And of course, if you wanted to check to make sure these are in fact uh, right triangles, you could do the Pythagorean theorem. You could make sure you check with the converse of the Pythag. All right, so those are the most common Pythagorean triples that come up. But there is a thing too where you have to also look at the multiples. The multiples of Pythagorean triples are also Pythagorean triples. So for example, if I took the 3, 4, 5 right here, and I multiplied it by 2, I would get 6, I would get 8, and I would get 10. And that is a Pythagorean triple. We could multiply it by anything, and that would also be a Pythagorean triple. So for example, 30 and multiplying by 10, 40 and 50, also a Pythagorean triple. Um, I could go on and on and on indefinitely with multiples, but obviously I don't want to do that. So let's just say 3x, 4x, and 5x is a general Pythagorean triple that represents that 3, 4, 5 triangle. All right, and the same is true for the others. So 10, 24, 26 multiplying by 2 or by multiplying by 10, we have 50, 120, 130, that's a humongous triangle. Um, or in general, 5x, 12x, and 13x. All right, so you get the point. Um, this is not a video about multiplying, so I'm going to stop there for this part. Just remember that multiples of triples are also triples. All right, let's look at an example. Okay, so yes, I know you could always use Pythagorean theorem to do this question. However, there is a quicker, simpler way if you have the Pythagorean triples memorized. All right, so let's just put them down here and pretend that we have them memorized. The 3, 4, 5, the 5, 12, 13, the 8, 15, 17, and the 7, 24, 25. 7, 24, 25. All right. So here's a temptation. If you have them half memorized, you know that foggy little place between yes, I got it and no, I don't. Well, you might see 
that there's a 12 here and there's a 5 here and you'd be like, oh, this, this is a 5, 12, 13 maybe or something and put 13 here. That is not a good idea. Do not fall into that trap. You have to know these things down pack so you don't look at something like this and think that's 13. All right. However, we don't see a 12 and a 15 here anywhere. But that's just because this is not in its simplest form. Remember we spoke about the fact that... Um, any multiple of a triple is also a triple. So this looks like it could potentially be the multiple of a triple. So let's over here on the side draw a smaller version of this triangle. And then we can divide through both these things by the common factor. And what's the common factor here? Well, 3 can go into 12, 3 can go into 15. So if I divided both things by 3... I would get, on the bottom, I would get 4, and I would get, divide by 3, I would get here that this is 5. All right, so now we're cooking. We have, oh, I should have put that here. There we go. So now we have a 4, we have a 5 in the hypotenuse, and that means our other side here in the little triangle, or a similar little triangle over there, is 3. But remember that this triangle has been scaled up from this little triangle. This one is three times the size as this one, which means that since this is three, this must be three times that size. So that is three times three, which is nine. So we found that that is nine. And of course, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to check. All right, that's it for today.